Good morning, Grace Chapel family. Excellent to be here with you on a Tuesday. Um, I am getting ready to go through Ecclesiastes chapter nine, uh, which uh, I enjoy. I enjoy this chapter. It's a little bit depressing, um, but I do enjoy the chapter. Uh, it's got some really interesting elements in it, and uh, as we read down through it, you'll you'll get what I'm saying. Uh, I need to back up just a little bit from yesterday, just so that you kind of get the context. Um, so I'm going to read uh, chapter 8, starting in verse 16, and we'll read down. Um, again, Koheleth, uh writing about wisdom under the sun. And he says this, When I applied my heart to know wisdom and to see the business that is done on the earth, how neither day nor night do one's eyes sleep. Then I saw all the work of God, and that man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun. However much man may toil in seeking, he will not find it out. Even though a wise man claims to know, he cannot find it out. Chapter 9, verse 1. But all of this I laid to heart, examining it all, how the righteous and the wise and their deeds are in the hand of God. Whether it is love or hate, man does not know. Both of them are before him. It is the same for all, since the same event happens to the righteous and the wicked, to the good and to the evil, to the clean and the unclean, to him who sacrifices and to him who does not sacrifice. As the good one is, so the sinner, so is the sinner, as he who swears is, is the one who shuns the oath. This is the evil in all that is done under the sun, that the same event happens to all. Also, the hearts of the children of men are full of evil, and madness is in their hearts while they live. And after they go to the dead, and after they go to the dead, but he who is joined with all the living has hope, for a living dog is better than a dead lion. For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing, and they have no more reward. For the memory of them is forgotten. Their love and their hate and their envy have already perished, and forever they have they have no more share in all that is done under the sun. So, go, eat with your bread with joy, and drink your wine with a merry heart, for God has already approved what you do. Let your garments be always white, let not oil be lacking in your head. Enjoy life with the wife whom you love all of the days of your vain life that he has given you under the sun, because that is your portion in life, and in your toil at which you toil under the sun. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. For there is no work or thought or knowledge or wisdom in Sheol to which you are going. Again, I saw under the sun that race is not, the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to the intelligent, nor favor to those with knowledge, but time and chance happen to all of them. Uh, for man does not know his time. Like fish that are taken in an evil net, and like birds that are caught in a snare, so the children of men are snared at an evil time when suddenly it falls upon them. I have also seen an example of wisdom under the sun, and it seemed great to me. There was a little city with a few men in it, and a great king came against it and besieged it, building great siege works against it. But there was found in it a poor wise man, and he by his wisdom delivered the city. Yet no one remembered that poor man. But I say that wisdom is better than might, though the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard. The words of the wise, heard in quiet, are better than the shouting of a ruler among fools. Wisdom is better than the weapons of war, but one sinner destroys much good. So, um, just looking at the text this morning, there there's a lot that's said in here, but you can start to see a little bit of what I was talking about, about Quaheleth and his reflection on death. Uh, this is ultimately kind of where things uh, come to. Um, in verses one through six, he really kind of ends up with this kind of, uh, uh, kind of whatever, you know, death comes to everybody, you know, so there's nothing we can do. And, and to a certain extent that's under the sun, that's true. You know, as he examines the righteous and the wise and their deeds that are in the hand of God, right? Whether it's love or hate, man does not know both are before him, right? With these, these, these contrasting principles, uh, righteousness versus wickedness, wisdom versus folly, love versus hate, all of these principles are before him. And regardless of where you are, regardless of your actions, everybody experiences the same thing. The righteous and the wicked, the good and the evil, the clean and the unclean, to him who sacrifices, him who doesn't sacrifice, to one who is good, so is the sinner, he who swears, and he who shuns the oath. This is an evil that is done under the sun, that the same event happens to all. 
Gwahalath calls death evil. And he's not wrong. Death is evil. Death is an evil. It, death is the result. It's the, it's the punishment for the evil that is existing. And in and of itself is an evil because we are, as Kwahala said earlier, we, God has set eternity on our hearts. And as we experience our life and as we experience things around us, death is that thing that's like, uh, this is an evil. This is, this, this is against everything that in my inner being makes sense. Um, you know, and that's why when you talk to people as they age and as they get older, they don't feel like they, I mean, their body feels like they've gotten older, but their spirit and their mind, a lot of times they, they don't feel like they have. Um, and there's this element to which, you know, we're made with eternity on our hearts. And, and the reality is, is death is something that almost feels foreign to our experience, even though technically it is the experience of everything and everyone under the sun. And Kwahalath ultimately is saying like, what, what does it matter whether you're good or whether you're evil? Because no matter what, you're going to die. And he's expressed over and over again in the past couple of chapters that he doesn't know what's going to happen when he dies. That there's under the sun, we don't know. And, and that's why you hear so many people saying, well, we don't know what's going to happen after death. And, uh, you know, so whatever it is, just deal with it then um, because we can't know. And that's, and that's not what the Christian truth is teaching. We do know what happens after death. We actually, and that's the same thing that Judaism teaches, is that we do know uh, what happens after death, that there's judgment, that you stand before God in judgment. And since God is the God of the living, uh, then God is a God of people who live, and we live beyond our experience here under the sun. Um, so he calls, Kohalath calls death evil. Um, regardless of the actions of, of those, death comes to all. Um, and evil exists in man while he lives. You'll notice that uh, evil exists in man while he lives, uh, but in death we have nothing. And, and, and that's where he, he kind of goes in. But he who is joined with all living has hope, for a living dog is better than a dead lion. And there's this element to which so once you're dead, like it's, there's nothing. It's kind of where he's at in his life. It's where he's at in his thinking. He says, at least the living know that they will die, but the dead don't even know that. They know nothing. They have no more reward for the memory of them is forgotten. And, and this is a strong element that's throughout Ecclesiastes as well, is that Quahalath is deathly afraid of being forgotten. Uh, he's deathly afraid of being forgotten by others. Now, isn't it a wicked, interesting irony that God would... Um, you know, give uh, him an opportunity to speak uh, in the scriptures and that the words that Quahalath would write down and that we would hold fast thousands of years later, uh, that he would be known by his writings. Uh, so, so interesting. Um, the memory of him may be forgotten, but his words remain. Um, and so verse six, he says, their love, their hate, their envy uh, have already perished forevermore. They have no more share in all that is done on the sun. And that's the element here is that Kohalath sees death as the end. And we know that that's not the case. Both uh, Judaism, properly understood, and Christianity both teach that our life here under the sun is not the end. And, and Kohalath basically says, he, you know, there's no one that's come back from death to tell us, and there's no one who can tell us what God is doing, so there's no way we can know. Um, and so it seems as though he, he misunderstands the scriptures. Um, so... What does he come to? What is his conclusion? Well, he basically says, um, those who are dead no longer share in the benefits of life. So, uh, enjoy simple pleasures of life. Uh, enjoy uh, companionship, uh, food, uh, just life, whatever that is, merriness and joy. Um, and he says, for God has already approved what you do. There's an element to which if... If it's done, God has, a, in a sense, approved it because he's allowed it. Uh, there's almost that element there. Um, but also that God has created food for enjoyment. He has created drink for enjoyment. He has created work also for our enjoyment. He has, he has created those things so that we might find joy, not only in the things that God gives, but in, in God himself. Um, he continues to go on. He says, let your garments always be white. And I don't think he means use bleach when you wash your clothes. Um, I, I think more along the idea of what he's saying here is, is, you know, do what is right before others so that your clothing looks clean. 
uh, and that there's nothing that's on you that sticks. There's nothing that's grimy. There's nothing that's, that's the idea. And anytime we see white garments used in the scriptures, both in the New Testament and the Old Testament, there's an idea of righteousness and, and holiness and se being separated from. And so he says, let your garments always be right. Do what's right. Always do what's right. And he says, let not oil be lacking in your head. Now, this, this could be a couple of different metaphors here. Primarily, I think this is talking about abundance. You know, always always pursue to have the abundance and always be giving yourself that abundance of what basically what you have. A little bit of element here of what you see is carpe diem, right? Uh, seize the day. Uh, that's the Latin version of seize the day. Basically, you know, live it up to the fullest today because tomorrow we die. And what's interesting is we're seeing a resurgence in this philosophy, uh, even in videos that I'm seeing online. You know, I, I recently listened to a video online, a guy, I was talking with these two younger people and, and he said, look, he says, you know, if I gave you a million dollars today, he says, is there anything in the next couple of days that could could bring you down. And the person was like, no, no, like I, I'd, be pretty, I'd be pretty elated. There would be very few things that could bring me down if you gave me a million dollars today. And the guy said, excellent. He said, okay, he says, let's, for the sake of argument, let me bring it to $10 million. And he says, but now tomorrow you don't wake up. And the person, he said, would you take the deal? And the person said, heck no. And he said, well, if $10 million, if a million dollars you've said would, would be enough to not bring you down. But I was to give you $10 million today, but you wouldn't be able to wake up. You value waking up tomorrow as more than the money that I would give you today. He says, then why don't you live your life in the positivity of that each day is a gift? And there is there is wisdom in that. And, and although it's worldly wisdom, it's the same wisdom that Quahaleth comes to that Enjoy the days that you have. Don't 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 waste your life fretting about all of the things that I've fretted about. Ultimately, just enjoy your life. And that's what he says in verse 9. Enjoy your life with the wife whom you love all the days of your vain life <laughs> that you have that he, God, has given you under the sun. He looks at it and he's like, look, your life is meaningless, purposeless, it's valueless. But just enjoy it, because that's what God's given you. And again, Quahaleth is looking only under the sun. He doesn't understand spiritual things. He doesn't understand the truths of what Scripture is declaring. And he certainly doesn't understand what we understand today as New Testament believers. But there's this element to which this is, this is all that you can do. And so he then goes on to say that God has given that to you. That's what God has given you because that's your portion. God has given each person a portion. That's what Quahaleth views it as. He's given each person a portion in life. And in your toil, which you toil in the sun, God's given you the work that you're going to do. He's given you the, enjoy, the things you have to enjoy, the power that you have to enjoy it, and just live it up to the best of your ability. Now, to a certain extent, he's not wrong. To a certain extent, we have to look at it and go, you know what? If this is what God has given me today, I can find joy in it. I can count my blessings. I can be thankful for the things that God has given me. And even when there's hardship and toil, I can be thankful that God gave me this to do. And I will find joy and pleasure in it. Uh, and that's that's important. And that's what the Apostle Paul talks about in Philippians, that, that I count it all, or uh, sorry, uh, that he says that uh, various trials, that he, he is content. He found the secret of being content. That ultimately he relies upon God for his strength and he relies And that in that he can find contentment in every other aspect of life. Verse 10, continuing on, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might, for there is no work or thought or knowledge or wisdom and shield to where you're going. Basically, he's saying, live your life now because once you're dead, you're dead. That's what he's saying there. Um, again, we, we recognize that that's not true, but although there is an element of truth, again, there, because under the sun, that is what we see. But in the long scheme of things, God has given us one life to live to him uh, now in the way that we're living now. Uh, future, we're going to be living for him eternally if we are in Christ. If we're not in Christ, we're gonna be living in judgment. And so now is the now is the time of salvation. Now is the day of, of reconciling others to Christ and promoting the message of the gospel. We will have all of the rest of eternity to do all of the things that Quahaleth is saying we should enjoy now. Um, but recognizing 
that this is the time of action. This is this is the time where we actually can act. Uh, once we've passed, we're appointed to judgment. So verse 11, he then goes on a little bit and he he begins kind of talking a little bit more about, again, I saw under the sun, the race is not to the swift, the battle is not to the strong, bread to the wise, riches to the intelligent, favor to those with knowledge, but time and chance happen to them all. Now, the thing is, this is contrary to what we often think, right? We say, oh, well, you know, if you're equipped to, if you're the strongest, you're going to win the battle. If you're the fastest, you're going to win the race. If you are really wise, you're going to always make sure you're going to have food. If you're very intelligent, you're going to be rich. If you have knowledge, you'll probably get a lot of favors. But Quahela says time and chance happen to them all. And he he kind of has this perspective of chance, but at the same time, this is God's element of control of this chance. So it's, it's interesting. Ultimately, man does not know his time. And this goes back to what we talked about in chapter three, how we don't know when the right thing is to do and how the right thing is to do. We don't know the time. We don't know when our time is the end. We don't know when our time is beginning. We don't know when the right thing is to do when. And so specifically related to the death, and so verse 12, he says, for man does not know his time, like fish that are taken in an evil net and like birds that are caught in a snare. So these children and men are snared in an evil time when it suddenly falls upon them. The reality is, is that sometimes circumstances befall us and we didn't see it coming. And so he then says, I've got an example of wisdom under the sun. He's like, I'm going to give you some wisdom under the sun. And it seemed great to me. He said, there was this little city with a few men in it and a great king came against it and besieged it building great siege works against it. But there was found in it a poor wise man, and he by his wisdom delivered the city. Yet no one remembered that poor man. But I say that wisdom is better than might. Uh, though the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard, the words of the wise in, heard in quiet are better than the shouting of a ruler among fools. Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroys much good. I think this is where he's kind of culminating and, and saying, look, wisdom is still of value. It's it's better than everything else. In fact, uh, words of the wise heard in quiet are better than shouting a ruler among fools. Wisdom is better than weapons of war. But ultimately, the sinners destroy much good. And so there's this element to which there are people constantly coming against the wise. And that makes wisdom difficult. Well, we'll continue in chapter 10 tomorrow, but that is chapter 9 of Ecclesiastes. Hopefully you're not too depressed. Um, just remember that we can have confidence in the things of the future because of what Christ has done. And uh, Quahalath is, again, looking under the sun. And sometimes we're tempted to only look at under the sun. And we need to not do that. We need to look to the sun and not under the sun. God bless you all. Have a great Tuesday.